Hello there YouTube, uh, this is Aaron again coming to you from Michigan. Uh, hopefully with some other, some new uh, ideas for you uh, on some things I've discovered here over the winter. Um, lately I've been concentrating on uh, scope cams for my, uh, uh, for my impact so that when uh, spring comes and summer I can um, start to shoot with those and do some night visioning and that sort of thing. So basically I've been working on three things. I've been working on trying to come up with a system, a mounting system for, the best mounting system I should say, for uh, a uh, smartphone, for a camera, and I have a recommendation for the camera, and for night vision. And so first I was working on a mounting system, now I was going to work on the rest of it. So uh, the mounting system I come up with is a very, very good mounting system. And so we're going to talk about that. So the things we're going to try to cover today is uh, what is the best mounting system? Uh, what is a really, really good uh, setup for a iPhone, a camera, and for night vision? And a cheap way of doing it. Let me throw that in. Um, and then we're going to talk about the best way to mount your, uh, your scope for, um, for cameras. Uh, and then uh, what is the best lighting system for, light, for lighting uh, for infrared? And then finally, uh, and what I'll probably start with first, is an update upon the bipod that I talked about uh, in my initial video on uh, trying to stabilize the gun. So uh, with that, let's go. The thing I'm most excited about in, in doing this video is that I didn't come up with this. I actually saw it on, uh, I'm not sure if it's the exact same one, but very similar to what I'm introduce, about to introduce you to, uh, is going to be um, a system of using plumbing supplies. Ten, under ten dollars worth of plumbing supplies. I'm gonna go through those first because they're gonna they're gonna work with any system you get. Uh, so whether you want to with the system I'm about to recommend or any system you're gonna go with, it, I guarantee you these pieces are gonna work. The first one is a one and a quarter by one and a quarter uh, piece of fitting, uh, and it says here there's a one and one fourth drain pipe to drain pipe. So I guess you're you're hooking this to a drain pipe, but it's one and a quarter. The nice thing about this one and a quarter drain pipe, and it cost, this was the most expensive piece, this was $2.79, is that this thing here fits perfectly over my scope. And as you can see, it comes with clamps. Thus far, I haven't had to uh, use the clamps. If it does move, I just move it around a little bit, but I could clamp it on, and I probably will when I start to take it outside and move it around a lot more. But I use UTG scopes, always have, probably always will. On the UTG scope, this thing fits over it so well and so snugly that I haven't had to use those. Uh, if you, get, you got another scope and it's uh, not snug enough, you can always wrap black tape around it uh, to build it up a little bit before you slide it on. But I slid it on and I was going to work. Another thing I found though was that because this piece extends back, I needed to come up with a system for supporting it. All I did was take a scope mount, put it on there, take the mount apart, and the top piece of the mount that goes over the scope, I actually unverted it and slid it in here and put uh, black tape around it to hold it in place so it just can sit down on that and it works perfectly. This is a support for it to keep it from drooping once you start to add things to it. Okay, the next thing you're going to buy uh, is going to be the cheapest. And this will work on your iPhone uh, and on your video phone. I mean, I'm sorry, and on your night vision that I'm going to suggest anyway. This thing is 79 cents. Again, it's one and a quarter. Uh, I already made one, but I can't find it, so I'm just going to show you how to demonstrate to you. All you need for your phone is a plastic cover. And then you want to take this. Some people say that they would actually drill it uh, and put screws in it. Doesn't make sense. sense. Rough it up, rough it up, get you some really good quality. Um, uh, 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 I, I'm forgetting the name of the stuff now. So I'm doing this thing so late. Uh, epoxy glue uh, and uh, epoxy it on. Once you epoxy it on, four minutes you set. You don't have to do any drilling anything, you're done. This thing will pop into the air and you're shooting. I can't demonstrate because it it's not together. I do it on the next piece. The next thing I'm recommending is camera setup. Now, I got this from uh, Ted's. Ted was shooting a video and he stopped and he paused and he said what camera he was using. I want to thank you so much for that. I see people all the time shooting night vision stuff 
Sony, or uh, whatever, they never tell you what the model number is. It makes no sense to me. If you, you got to explain to people what you're actually showing them. But anyway, in this particular case, though, this is the uh, the Casio XLIM, E X I L I M, H S, and the model number is the uh, E X Z R one thousand. Now they make this in different levels. Okay, this camera was about four hundred dollars new. Uh, they, they've been out for quite some time now, depending on what model you get. I got this for one hundred twenty-five dollars on eBay, and it works perfectly. And I bought an extra battery for it. But the thing that makes these cameras so unique, or any camera you decide to go to, this is what's going to work for you. The screen has got to be a tiltable. It has to be a tiltable screen. This thing pops up and tilt, tilts to any angle that you want, and that is so important uh, because it's to the point that even if you want to shoot straight up in a tree, you can lay, lay on your back, look at this thing here and shoot straight up with it because this screen is going to accommodate any angle you want and then pop back into place for regular shooting. That's very important. So this camera here is the camera to buy. I want to thank Ted again for coming up with that. To make this camera functional and to do the things to fit onto this system here, another piece, this was $1.89 um, and it don't have the name on it but it's over in the drain area. See something here, what does it say? It just said Nibco, uh, but it's really dimensions you need to know. It's going to come like this, but this white piece you won't need. This is one and a half by one and a quarter. It fits perfectly over this camera because this camera has a ring around it that is that same diameter. You can take this thing, instead of gluing it, and you don't want to do it to this camera because it's a nice camera, uh, you take this and you hold it up to that ring. And you take black tape and you go round and round and round and round until you secure it on there, like I got on here. That way, if I ever decide to change, I can always take it off. Okay. But look how simple this is once you get it. With this piece here helping to, to balance this back in, you pop that in. You're shooting all day. Now, again, this summer, if I start if I start bumping around or something, I will add these clamps and make it more secure and untighten and put it in, tighten it back up, depending on the system I'm using. But for right now. It goes just like that, and it shoots and it shoots all day. Uh, so very good camera. This is one I would recommend for you if not gotten into cameras yet. Night vision camera goes the same way. Pop it in, you're shooting all day. Talk about this camera here, okay? Uh, this again. This is my night vision camera. Uh, I did a lot of eBay searching. You get this. Everybody's recommending Sony's and all these others. I find that the Sony's are very heavy. They got lenses. They got all kinds of stuff in them. They're very good cameras. But for night vision, you're not going to get a great deal of clarity over this camera. Even with Sony, unless you zoom in way in because it does have optical zoom. This does not have opt optical zoom. Uh, so uh, the more you zoom in, the unclear it's going to get. But you're going to do all your zooming right here. Uh, so you don't really don't need to zoom this way in. But the nice thing about this camera is this. This is a Best Tecker, B-E-S-T-E-K-E-R. Okay. I paid $97 for this camera. Because uh, uh, a guy did a demo on this with night vision. I said, wow, man, this is clear. I'm getting it. What I didn't know at that time, but I'm about to tell you. All of these cameras are exactly the same. You'll see Best Tecker on some. You'll see, um, um, oh, God, I can't think of some of, them, some of the names. And some of them won't have names on them at all uh, on them. And uh, it's the thing is this: if it's just the little, little, these little cameras out of China, no matter what the name is on it, all you want to look for is this: if it says night vision on it, then they're all the same. It's gonna say night vision. It's gonna say it's a three-inch screen. Don't get the two and it's two and one seven screen. They got a two point seven screen. That point three is quite a bit. Especially when you try to shoot at vermis through this thing. Uh, so go for the one with the three-inch screen. That's that's another one that I say. This thing has Wi-Fi. You can actually connect it to your phone. Um, and I'm still I haven't done that yet. Uh, supports 32 gigabytes. It's a 1080p uh, and all of that. I've seen these things as cheap as $45 free shipping. And I saw a used one for $19 on eBay. Uh, so don't pay $97 for it. Get the one for $45 because it works the same, same, exact same way. Secondly, too, they come in two models in terms of uh, 
um, in terms of batteries. My battery is on the outside. It came with two of these batteries. I can't find any replacement batteries for this. So luckily I have two. There's another camera just like this. And it's made by all the companies again, but the battery goes in the bottom. Get the one with the battery in the bottom. Because those batteries are really available and you can buy them all over the place for uh, five or six bucks each. Uh, and so if you're doing night shooting, you only got two batteries and you run out of battery, you're done. But with those, you can have buy enough batteries to get you through it. Um, so um, go with that camera. Now, when you get this camera, I want to show you two things you probably might want to do. One's you're certainly going to want to do. You got to do. Uh, this camera is going to have, have two lights on the front of it. So when you look it up on the internet, if you don't want to go with the name, if you see any picture of this camera in the front, it's either got two little white lights up here, or two little white lights down here, or two little whites on the side. Doesn't matter. Those are the night vision ones. Those are night vision lights. They illuminate the darkness. You gotta go in, take this camera, take out the four screws, take this camera apart. There's nothing in there hardly. Snip those two to the lights. Otherwise your battery's gonna be dying on you every 15 minutes or so. Those lights burn up a lot of energy. So do not uh, uh, leave those lights connected. Next thing you're going to see is you're going to see an IR filter down here. The IR filter falls into place when you're shooting regular colors. When you go into night vision, there's a little piece of metal on top of this, uh, on top of this little lens, and there's an electromagnet. When you go to night vision, you're going to hear it pop up. <coughs> and what it's doing is those electric magnets are engaged. It's going to pull that thing up so you can go to night vision. That's more energy being used up. I cut those two and took that thing out because I wanted no power except for all of the power I wanted to do was running this thing. Uh, but if you want to shoot yours for day and night vision, leave that in place. But I don't know what it's going to do to your battery life. But I know if you take those two things out, your battery life is going to go up significantly. Uh, so that's my recommend recommendation for that. Any of the camera that says night vision, uh, any of these little cheap cameras that says night vision, and, and you don't have to get them out of China. Mine came out of uh, California. There's a uh, there's a few I want to get out of California. I saw one out of New York. Okay, next, next thing I want to talk to you about is your illuminators before I get into the actual scope situation. The best illumination later I found, uh, and there's a lot of them out there, I will say that uh, you don't have to go by model number. That's what's so nice about this. Go for your price. Don't go by model number. I mean, don't, don't go by model number. I mean, go by not model number, but don't go by name. Like, this is a Volvo. Okay, and I got this because the guy recommended it, and I looked it up, and it was very, very good. Uh, he, was a, he, he did rat shooting in, in Great Britain, and he used this, and this is a great one. Uh, but as I was looking it up, I'm finding that what you want to go with is the T. T67, T50, T30, T40, T20. And decide what you want to get. Now, the T value, you're going to find, if you go to T20, it's going to be about that much, that damn, 30, 40, 50. And the 67 will jump big on you like this one. Uh, the nice thing about this one is that this thing here, can, I can tune it all the way down to 10 yards for shooting uh, close in because it's got three power settings, low, medium, and high. And it's, it's focusable. I can zoom it all the way out and throw a beam out there 100 yards with no problem or better. I can zoom it all the way in and diffuse the light enough to shoot 10 yards and put it on the lower setting. It's totally focusable. This is the best one that's out. And the and, and reason I say go with the T67 is that the price between that and the 50 and the 20 is not that much. So you may as well get a light that's going to serve you a long time. And you probably won't run into a problem I ran into. This being 67 millimeters, this being 56 millimeters, I had to really build this thing up here in order to get these two things to clear. If you got a 44 or 32, you're not going to have any problem. You can just throw this on there with one mount one of these mounts straight down on you, you wouldn't have to put in an extra one to raise up that extra distance. But, but uh, uh, also I'll say this real quick, and you probably already know if you researched this. All cameras, I did not know this, all cameras can see uh, infrared. All cameras, even when they got the infrared filter on them, you can see them. Uh, uh, right now, I'm going to turn this on. If I turn this on, look at it, all I see is a little red light. But if I turn it on there, you're going to see a lot more light than that. Because that camera can still see, even though it's got the filter in it, it because this is so intense, it can still see uh, the ultraviolet, uh, 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 ultraviolet. I'm getting sleep. I'm getting ticky here, but it can see the IR that's coming through this thing. 
the infrared light that's coming through this thing. Um, so if you, you can also, if you want to go really, really cheap, go find you any camera out there. I did it. Take it apart. There's a little lens in there over the front of it. When you get inside it, just over the front of the lens, there's a little lens, and when you turn it to the side, it's going to look red. Then it'll look clear, then it'll look red. Take that, pop that off, and you got a, you got an infrared camera. I bought a camera for a little Sony for nine bucks, uh, ten bucks shipping. Got it, took it apart, popped that off, because the guy had instructions on there, popped it off, threw it on my camera, turned this light on, hooked it up to this before I got all any of this other stuff. And I'm looking out in my backyard and I'm seeing rabbits. They're not as clear, because it's a little camera, a little smaller camera than this, but it works. Last thing I want to talk to you about, and um, we're gonna finish up here, uh, is the uh, actual scope mounting system. If you look at this gun really, really carefully, and I'm hoping you guys probably have already noticed, that this scope is way forward. I mean, this right here, from here to here, is just the, uh, the, 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 the thing for the sun. But the scope is actually right there, but that, that scope is way forward. And the reason it's way forward is this. Um, one, I added a, uh, I got a 9 inch reel, 8 inch reel down here now. I used to have a 6. And I found an 8, and I, and I found it on eBay, and it was this mother we talked about. I actually took this one, and the 6, and brought it up here. When I brought it up here, I was able to push it forward past their 3 inches. Second thing I did, if you look real carefully, is that I don't have any mounts up here for scope mounts. I put both of them back here. By doing that, I was able to push it, push it forward another um, four inches. As a result of pushing it for, that far forward, I actually got this gun now in a position where I, I could put this on here and still shoot it from the shoulder. Otherwise, this thing would be all over my face right now. Okay? So I'm recommending that when you do get your system set up, that what you do is get a riser. Get the eight inches to the six inch so you can push it out two more inches. Uh, and then you just go out and shoot it and you set up your MOs and you got them right there. And another nice thing about it is this, and I should say this because uh, it's not clear to you right now. I have two scopes. This is a scope I shoot when I'm just shooting with my eyepiece. It's got the eyepiece on here. I don't want to mess with putting this on there, putting, taking this off and all. Just get two scopes. One for all of your your, your cameras, and one for your regular shooting. Not very expensive, okay? Uh, because one of the things that's really, really nice about this system is this, is that it's very quick release. Like right now, you see this is, this is way forward, uh, and um, I can pop this off, quick release. This isn't as quick as that one because this is a screw off. The other one is just a lock on, I like much better. I'm taking this system off, now, no, I, now I would have to take this off, and I can't. Well, I'll just take it off. Pop the, pop the support off. Grab my regular camera. I mean, my regular. I'm a photographer. I'm always saying camera. Pop it on. Lock it down. And I'm back to hunting mode. Right there eyepiece right where it's supposed to be, okay? And if I decide that, you know, been out hunting, or let's say I'm at the range, okay? I've been shooting all day with this one. Let me shoot my scope cam a while. Pop this off, pop on the pieces, pop on the pieces. I'm not gonna put it in a little bracket right there. You know that this goes here, but I'm not gonna take the time. Take this, slide it forward to there, lock it in place. What, a couple of seconds? And lock it in place. Put this in place too if I had to. Pop this on. And now I'm shooting with my co I'm shooting with my scope cam again. That simple. Very, very nice, simple way of doing it all. This thing here ran me $97. You can get this for forty some dollars. You can be in the night vision for $150. And I'm going to put some night vision at the end of this video. I hope this has been helpful to you. I really like it. Um, 
I, uh, the first time I did this video, believe it or not, it took, it took me 27 minutes and I got it down from there and down from there. This time I rushed it. I wanted to keep it under 15 minutes and I think I've done that. Uh, and so I'll add, uh, uh, send me any uh, comments you might have or any clarification I may need to send to you. But other than that, uh, let's just keep teaching each other and let's keep learning and uh, keep enjoying this great sport that, we've, we're, that we're into. I just love, love air guns and the impact. It's the only gun for me. Have a good day. Oh, one more thing. Um, I touched upon it, but I didn't give it to you. Uh, this is now an 8 inch. You watch my other video. This is now 8 inches instead of 6 inches. I found it. And this is it. It is the Millet M4 Riser. 22 bucks on eBay. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is this. I know you know that when I change between these two scopes, especially with this and me having a riser on it, it throws my MO all over the place, right? This is what I've done. Right here is a breakdown of, I got it for 8 power and 10 power. I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 8 power and shooting at 1 power on the power wheel and 4 power on the power wheel for both this scope um, and 1 and 4 and also this scope and 1 and 4. So when I change the mill dots, when I change it over, all I got to do is mill, go to the mill dot settings I've saved, I got here. Uh, and this is my little cheat sheet. Really easy to do. Type it up on the computer, take it out, put some tape over it, and it's there. Uh, but that's how I, I'm able to make my adjustments and still keep shooting right real accurate with this thing. Thanks again. Look for the videos at the end. Give, wish me luck and give them to you. This is the night vision that we talked about. This is 15 yards. That's 20 yards. Got to dial it in here. That's 20 yards. Turn the light up. We got out there. That's the second brightest setting, I believe. Uh, 20 yards. Go up to 25. Things kind of zoomed in, so it's kind of hard. Okay, here's 25 yards. Now we're going up to 30. Uh, it blew down when I had a sign right there that said 30. But the wind must have blew it down. But there's my target right, swinging target right there at 30. Now I'm going to go out to 40. This tree is 40 yards away. I think if I can zoom in on that, you'll see. 40 yards to the tree. Look at the 40 yard target. And this is how you can dim the light. That's brightest. That's weakest. It's power setting one. Power setting two. Power setting three. As you can see, three can go out to 100, uh, 300 yards, they say. Power setting two is best. show you how you can zoom in and out with the camera. That's a zoom in. As you can see, there's a squirrel on the tree. See him? Running up and down. They come out at night and feed on that tree. That's a flying squirrel.
And here are the three power settings of the light. That's the brightest. Okay, so right there, as you can see, that's one. That's two. And then you can see the little squirrels running around again. I talked about. And then if I want to really wash it out, I can go to full power. So you can see really power two at 40 yards is more than enough. These are deer in the yard feeding on corn that I put out. Three of them currently. They come here every evening to feed on the corn. This is the first time I've ever seen them in daylight, though. This is a welcome opportunity to see them in the daytime. <laughs> 